This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and for those of you who say we don't review enough affordable, super affordable, in this case, laptops or enough AMD Ryzen, well, we have both here. This is the Acer Aspire 3 for 2023, and it's the Ryzen edition of that. So this laptop lists for $399, and the first thing you got to say when you look at that, it's not bad looking, right? It's a 15.6 inch full HD laptop and we have AMD Ryzen inside. So don't get super excited about that yet because it's gonna be a lower end Ryzen processor, but it's the latest in the six nanometer process. We're gonna look at it now. So the street price on this, I got Amazon, is 380 US dollars. So this makes some of the more affordable Dell Inspirons start to look a little bit expensive. There's certainly a place for these laptops, especially one that presents as well as this one. You've got a kid in grade school and they haven't been given a Chromebook by school, for example. You don't want to give them the most expensive, most powerful laptop at that point. Your grandparents, not to be ageist about it, but there are some who just want to surf the web, watch some videos, do some... Skype calls with the kids, that sort of thing, and just anything. You're going on vacation. You don't want to take an expensive laptop or when you hit the road, but you just need something that keeps you in touch with Zoom calls and your work stuff. And, you know, it could even actually do some photo editing. It's not that incapable because it has the AMD Ryzen 7320U processor. So that's a four core, eight thread processor. It's called the Mendocino architecture. So this is based on older Ryzen architecture, really, despite the fact that it's a new 7000 series CPU, but reworked, like I said, six nanometer architecture. And while well, you look at the benchmarks and you'll say, hey, my Samsung Galaxy S22 benchmarks as well. Yeah, that's not untrue, in fact. But then again, your phone is so OP that most of us don't even need that much horsepower on a phone. Using this day-to-day -day for doing those kinds of productivity tasks and entertaining yourself and all that sort of thing, and even a little bit of photo editing, it actually doesn't feel bad. It's not like the days of old when you bought the super budget laptop and you got a really craptastic display and glacial performance. This one feels usable. Speaking of performance, we have eight gigs of RAM and that is soldered on. It is low power DDR5. Uh, at least it's dual channel though. There's two chips on the motherboard. We'll take a look at the internals. And you have an M.2 NVMe SSD, but as you can guess in this price range, it's not gonna be some crazy super fast PCIe 4 kind of SSD. We have reasonable connectivity on board in terms of ports too. We have Wi-Fi 6 on board to MediaTek card with Bluetooth 5.2, but for ports we have USB A's, we have USB C 3.2 Gen 2 ports, so 10 gigabit per second does display out, HDMI port, and of course a headphone jack. So it's not like you're going to be living dongle life or anything. It's a practical machine. The display on this, like I said, is absolutely not craptastic. This is not wide gamut. This is not even full sRGB, but it's a full HD IPS display, 15.6 inches, and it's not bad looking to look at it. I mean, I remember eight years ago reviewing some premium ThinkPads at the time, and they'd be like, oh, business people don't need nice screens, and they would be kind of sad to look at unless you paid for the better display. This one looks fine. It's not wildly colorful. It's not where you're gonna buy it and become a professional Photoshop jockey for color accuracy, though you could plug it into a better quality monitor to do that sort of stuff. You get the idea. Keyboard on this, here's a ding, even for the price, it's not backlit. What? Yeah. I, it's not bad feeling. It has a tactile feel to it that I didn't expect in this price range. It's quite low travel though. It has a shrunk down sort of number pad on the side. Some of you love number pads, some of you don't, but it's a little, there's smallish keys there, but it's an okay keyboard. And the trackpad is just fine and is rather roomy and large, in fact, and gives it a very modern looking appearance, unlike the bezels, which are kind of, you know, old school big. Now the underside is black plastic. It's not going to fool any there, anybody there looks wise, but to look at the rest of the laptop, it looks pretty much like anybody else's laptop. So it's not like you're also going to be carrying around something that looks cheese ball either. We do have stereo speakers on board. Of course we do, right? <laughs> They're not very loud though. They're pretty small drivers. So yeah. We have a 43 watt hour battery, which is a pretty good capacity battery for an Ultrabook and a 45 watt compact charger. It's a barrel pin connector. I'm okay with that. You can still use a USB-C charger with it if you want, but this frees up your USB-C port by giving you that. Now battery life on this is another happy point because you're just running full HD and you've got this 
basically fairly low power processor on board. So it's crazy. I mean, you're looking at 10 to 12 hours for light productivity work with the brightness set to 150 nits, which given the fact this doesn't go really very high anyway, 267, that's, you know, yeah, that is what it is. So good that as well. All right, to get inside, we flip it over as per normal and the silvery metal look top. Well, here we have genuine plastic and we're not gonna fool anybody with that. None, we're not trying to fool anybody. Phillips head screws are all easy to spot. They're all the same size and then pry the plastic clips up, take off the bottom cover. And here are the internals. The battery taking up a good amount of space here. This is the M.2 SSD. It has not exactly the world's fastest NVMe SSD in here. Obviously, you could upgrade it to something more, but if you're trying to save money, you probably don't want to throw a lot of money into parts anyway. MediaTek Wi-Fi 6 card is here with Bluetooth 5.2. RAM is soldered on board 8 gigs. At least it's dual channel. These are the chips right here. So you do get dual channel performance from your low power DDR5 RAM. Very small heatsink on the CPU here, but hey, it doesn't really run hot or wildly loud, and it seems to be appropriate. Pretty big fan cage over here, and pretty small stereo drivers towards the front edge, which might explain why the sound volume is not really that loud on this model. So if you need something for productivity, if you need something that's going to last you on a charge, if you need something that is incredibly affordable and doesn't look cheeseball, well, it's pretty successful at doing all of those things. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.